your local hospital depends on cross subsidies, which means those bits of it which are predictable, can make money, keep the other bits, like the elderly care wards, when the patients are, are being neglected, they keep them going. Once your surgical wards are closed because a private company is doing the same thing much cheaper, and your GPs who are desperate to save money feel they've got no choice but to choose the cheapest provider in order to try and keep other bits going, like the mental health services, what will happen is the economy of the hospital will fall apart and the government wants hospitals to act like businesses. And unlike banks, they've said that if a hospital goes bank bankrupt, it won't be bailed out. What are we going to do? Well, I think there are several things that we can do and we have to be positive about this. We need to tell people what's happening. Most people haven't got a clue. Most MPs haven't got a clue. I went to speak to the Health Select Committee last year. They really didn't know what was going and they were the Health Select Committee. We need to write, everybody needs to write to their MP. Local constituents writing to an MP makes far more difference than a campaigner like me writing to every MP. It's much better to have a patient write to their own local MP and tell them how worried they are. The other thing is most doctors are so busy trying to look after their patients and do their paperwork, they don't really know what's going on either. You need to tell your doctors that you care about the NHS and you care about what's happening. So write to your doctor, tell your consultant, tell the nurses that you care about what's happening and you care about them and you want a health system that's based on collaboration, cooperation, that works for patients. Okay. I'd now like to uh, move to open up the meeting to a wider set of discussions. And uh, Janet here has got a statement from Dr. Peter Christian from uh, the Jukes Avenue practice, which you wanted to read out. Um, Dr. Peter Christian is, I think he's chair of the um, uh, collaborative, um, the GPs collaborative locally. Uh, he pointed out that the present developments in policy are a continuation of what previous governments have done. Um, Previous governments have been keen to bring in commercial concerns and to increase the marketisation of healthcare. Because of developments in medical practice and demography, people um, living for longer, the funding of healthcare using our pres present system is becoming unsus uns unsustainable, unaffordable. Efforts to ring fence healthcare budgets will be frustrated. There's an organic growth that makes calls upon funding that are too expensive for the UK to sustain. Um, if we concede that the situation is unsustainable, what does one do? Um, keep the present system, which um, he referred to, I think, as a megalithic um, structure in the NHS, or bring in a new system. Um, GPs should be involved. They've already been briefed. Um, they, um, Department of Health hasn't um, stayed still while this has been going on. GPs have been actually approached. Um, the Pathfinder scheme is where GPs can bid for a starter pot of money. Um, the local GPs here have succeeded in their second bid to have this money. Um, and government is reporting um, some keenness of GPs to take this up, but this might be because of the financial incentive. Up to a point, the only point on which I agree with Dr. Christian, that this is, in my opinion, the final denouement of a policy that's been produced, but pursued by the Department of Health, covertly for 10 years. Uh, and the book we're writing is called The Plot Against the NHS. When I uh, was uh, started work on this in 2000, I interviewed a man called T Dr. Tim Evans. He's not actually a medical doctor, but he likes to be called doctor. And uh, he was representing the Independent Healthcare Association, which was negotiating the Concordat with Alan Milburn. And uh, he said to me, what we envisage is that the NHS will just be a logo attached to the organizations and activities of entirely private providers. And at the time, I thought, this man is far out. I mean, I just thought, I'm talking to a fanatic. Well, we're very close to realizing Tim Evans's vision. 
much more close than I think most people, including uh, the broadsheet press, realize. Um, I strongly feel that this is an extraordinarily undemocratic and in a certain sense unconstitutional process. There is no mandate for this legislation. It wasn't mentioned in the election, quite the contrary. David Cameron promised not to introduce major legislation on the NHS. Uh, and as, we say, as both speakers have said, they're going ahead with it before the bill has been through the House of Commons. They want to create a fait accompli. And it seems to me that what was said about uh, the students and about the uh, people in, in, in Cairo is true. It's only we who can actually derail this thing. It's got to be a popular expression of disgust and refusal to have this uh, thing taken from us. When are the British people going to get off their asses? Yeah. Stop watching Strictly Come Down. Very simple. Does this meeting want to appeal to our two local MPs to vote against the bill? All those who are in favour of that, they show. Those who are against lobbying, <laughs> well, I would think that's past unanimously. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, could you sign the petitions if you haven't already done so, and please return them to Janet here. On your behalf, I'd like to thank the two speakers. I think I've given us a marvellous introduction to the